Yo, 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 what is good, YouTube? It is your boy, Make America Lit, back with another NBA 2K23 video. And in today's video, I'm going to be ranking all of the defensive badges in NBA 2K23. Um, I've seen that a lot of people were ranking the badges and stuff like that, Um, you know, in the community. And I was thinking about making a video, but I didn't want to make a video uh, too early or too quick, uh, in my opinion. I kind of wanted to wait until, you know, I um, I had enough time with the badges. You know, the game came out in September. We're now in December. So we've had like, you know, a full mo two months, you know, October and November with the game to really know where these badges lay and where they don't lay. You know what I'm saying? So uh, I didn't want to rush and, you know, make a video about the badges or ranking them and stuff like that because... You know, when the badges come out, they might be OP, they might be weak, they might get buffed, they might get nerfed, they might get patched or something like that, or they might not get touched or uh, patched or anything like that. And that will make a difference in how, you know, I rank these badges. So, uh, with, with that being said, let's jump right into the video. We're going to start off with our first badge, which is going to be Anchor. And, you know, I have Anchor in the S tier, uh, personally. Uh, Anchor is just a really, really strong badge um, this year. It's always been a really good badge, rim protector and stuff before it was turned into Anchor. But Anchor is basically your bread and butter if you're a big man and you're playing in the paint and stuff like that. This is going to be your bread and butter to protecting the rim and getting stops and stuff like that. And it's going to help you not just with get blocks, but it works as uh, Intimidator from uh, previous 2Ks like 2K22, 2K21 and stuff like that. It's going to make people miss and stuff like that as well too. Uh, help you with, uh, you know, just getting contest on people in the paint as well as blocking shots and getting snatch blocks and stuff like that. So, you know, I have it in S tier obviously. Um, moving on, ankle braces. I have in, initially I had in D tier, right? But I'm actually going to move this into C tier. And the only reason why I'm going to move this into C tier is because you see a lot of people spamming step backs and uh, things of that nature with uh, not ankle breaker, uh, but with space creator and shot creating takeover. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what the actual takeover is called on next gen, but I know there's like a certain shot creating takeover that like makes you take people ankles and stuff like that. But on current gen is just shot creating takeover and they pair space creator on like silver or gold with shot creating takeover and they just snatch ankles left and right. So that's why I have this in C tier because it's going to help you with preventing some of those uh, animations where you get your ankles taken or you get dropped or stunned and stuff like that. But uh, this is the only way to really combat that. Um, ankle ankle breaker, you know, got nerfed to hell this year. Ankle breaker is pretty much useless. Kind of like how it was at the start of NBA 2K22 where nobody was really using it. Everybody was mostly using space creator and tight handles in NBA 2K22. Well, the same thing is kind of the same for NBA 2K23. There's not many people running ankle breaker. It's just not that good of a badge anymore. So people have gravitated to... Uh, just running space creator and just doing step backs and stuff like that. That's really more useful than wasting three to four to five points into Hall of Fame ankle breaker or gold ankle breaker to still not get any stun animations or dropping people animations and stuff. And I've noticed that even with ankle breaker and playmaking takeover, spamming dribble moves and stuff, I still don't really make people fall or get stunned. Like in my career, you see it, but you don't really see it in online play of like rec and park and stuff like that you get more ankle breakers with space creator and shot create and takeover than you do ankle breaker and play make and takeover so you know with that being said ankle braces used to be an s tier badge last year because of the spam of tight handles and stuff like that and space creator but this year c tier at best you know moving on our next badge that i'm going to be talking about is chase down artists now chase down artists Honestly, I have chased down artists in C tier as well too. And the reason why I have chased down artists in C tier is because I'm just ranking the badge. You know what I'm saying? I'm just literally just ranking the badge. I'm not ranking anything else when I do these videos. And you know, last year chase down artist was extremely OP. It was overpowered. Everybody was running it. I had it on a 6-1 play shot and I was getting chased down blocks with like a 30 something block like 
no type of block at all, barely any vertical on my build. My build was like a speed pie chart, play shot, the typical 6-1 play shot. And I was getting chased down blocks on dudes, and people was like, there's no way you're getting chased down blocks. But trust me, I was getting chased down blocks. It wasn't happening like every game, but, you know, if I timed it right and got like the scenario or a situation where I could get a chase down block, I was chasing down centers and shit like that with chase down. This year, there's way too many other variables that you need in order to make chase down artists even worth running. Okay, first of all, you need at least like a 75 to 80 vertical because you need to be able to jump. Do you need to have like at least a good speed, an 80, 85, maybe even a 90 speed so you can actually chase them down when you're chasing after them and stuff like that? And then you also still need to have a really good block rating because just having a 47 block to unlock bronze chase down artists just isn't going to just magically get you that block, you know what I'm saying? And bronze ain't even really worth it anymore, in my opinion. You kind of have to go up. I've ran this badge on silver, gold, Hall of Fame, and I couldn't even really tell if Hall of Fame was even worth it because, you know, it wasn't until I put anchor on Hall of Fame that I noticed I was getting chase down blocks. And then even when I took chase down artists off, Hall of Fame anchor was still getting me chase down blocks. So it's just like, honestly... You, you know, I really wouldn't even run this badge like that. But there has been instances where I do, you know, walk somebody down or put somebody's uh, layup or something on the backboard and stuff like that. Um, when you're playing against smaller players, I feel like this can be a useful badge. So that's why I have it in the C tier. But really, this badge is really D tier, if we're being honest. I'm, I'm you know what? I'm going to put this in D tier. I'm putting it in D tier. I'm, I'm sold that it is a D tier badge. Um... Moving on, uh, we're going to take a look at one of my favorite badges in the game. Uh, a badge that I think is really low-key and underrated. You know what I'm saying? And that's going to be Off-Ball Pass. Okay? So many people underrate this badge. So many people, you know, I, I really don't see people running this badge. But Off-Ball Pass is extremely underrated, especially for lower-rated defensive builds. Um, You're not going to be able to have those points to put into high levels of, like, clamps and challenger and interceptor and glove anyway um but off ball pest you know especially at that silver and gold level is gonna go crazy man it goes crazy for me on my shooter build you know um i'm able to stop and bump those dudes especially those six nine players that like the rim run do backdoor cuts and stuff for alley-oops and dunks and stuff like that on me because my build is only six five six six you know what i'm saying it's a lot harder to guard those six nine players but you can kind of lock up those corner, those corner sitters who like to cut back door, and those dudes who sit wing and like to cut uh, through the paint for oops and stuff like that. Uh, you know, by having off ball pests and stuff like that. And another reason why I like running off ball pests too is on my center when somebody comes to set a screen, that off ball pest will grab their center and push them and bump them out the way so they can't just immediately set a screen on my guard. So, you know, off-ball pest is very useful. I got it in B, which is pretty high. And I know people are going to be like, yo, what, what are you doing? Why do you have this that high? But trust me when I tell you, off-ball pest has its use. You know, even if you're just running it on silver, you should be running this badge on some form or level, bro. Trust me. Uh, if you're on a center, you know, bronze. But, like, if you're on a guard or a wing and you know you're going to be sitting corner or hash, guarding somebody do you want this on at least silver if you could get it to gold definitely get it to gold that's why i have it in b tier because it is a very useful badge um moving on clamps i don't even gotta even talk about clamps s tier badge automatically you guys know why clamps is an s tier badge i'm not gonna even talk about you know why clamps is an s tier badge you guys know it's a staple badge if you want to play good perimeter defense same thing with glove I don't think I even need to say anything about, like, these two badges. Um, these badges are just really good. You know, these are, like, some of the most OP badges in the game. Uh, not so much clamps, but definitely glove. Uh, anchor is really ridiculous, too, if you, you know, know how to play, know how to time your jumps and stuff like that. Um, moving on, uh, pick dodger. I have also in C tier. And that's mostly because I, I don't really notice people spam screens in NBA 2K23. This is a badge that I mostly just run on bronze. Mostly because I don't really get a lot of screens, you know, for whatever reason. I don't know why, because in this game, you should want screens because of how much people reach and 
how overpowered the steals are and reaching is in this game, you would think people would want screens more than ever now to stop people from reaching on them. But every game I play, I'm on the center. Dudes tell me they don't want screens. And when I'm on like a guard, I'm usually playing off ball. The point guard is still saying no screens. He's fine, no screens. And then he gets ripped like two, three times instead of just taking a gold brick wall screen or Hall of Fame brick wall screen to make his life easier. I don't know why, but, you know, um, people just don't set screens like how they used to. People don't spam Hall of Fame brick wall like they used to either. So I feel like this isn't a badge that's as useful. Last year, I probably would have put this in like a B tier, somewhere in between B and C. But this year is definitely a C tier to me. Like, you know, this is a badge that I throw on bronze and just forget about it. And when somebody do set a screen on me, I'm able to go either underneath it or over it or whatever like that. But, you know, I do still find use in it. It's just not as frequently used because I just don't notice two dudes setting screens. Maybe that's because I mostly play shooting guards slash small forward. But I just don't notice a lot of screens this year. So, it's just not as useful of a badge. Um, moving on, Pogo Stick. Definitely B tier badge. Pogo Stick. Really, you could put this in A tier if you want to be honest. But Pogo Stick is one of those badges where... It, here's the reason why Pogo Stick is B, B tier for me, right? Pogo Stick is one of those badges where you don't need Pogo Stick. You know, if you're a really good defensive player, you know, like... Uh, you know, 2K League players, they try to stay away from Pogo Stick because it does promote bad habits. It does turn people into jumpers. And you're like, yo, I got Hall of Fame Pogo. I could just keep jumping, 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 jumping. It doesn't matter. And sometimes that leads to you getting like, you know, picking up an early two, three fouls. You're putting people on the line that shouldn't you shouldn't be putting on the line and stuff like that. When you could just play hands up or just jump once, then play hands up, then jump a second time. But Pogo Stick will just turn you into somebody that just mash triangle. And you know, if you do... You know, too many jumps and you're standing next to them, they're just going to automatically foul them. I don't know why that's a thing. It's dumb as hell. But, you know, I feel like they should have to go up with the ball in order to draw the foul. But if you're just jumping next to somebody, it'll just automatically foul them. And I feel like, you know, the more you use pogo stick and treat it as a, a crutch or whatever, it makes you more of a bad defender. That was the case definitely last year in 2K22. Um, this year... It's kind of the same, but I feel like with the way rim running is in this game, you kind of need pogo stick because you can't really play hands-up defense anymore in NBA 2K. Despite what people like to tell people in, in game that I hear people, oh, just play hands-up defense, you can't play hands-up defense in this game no more. In NBA 2K18, NBA 2K17, and even NBA 2K19, you used to be able to just hold up on the right stick, and if somebody tried to lay the ball up on you or dunk the ball on you, they would usually get sucked into this dumbass contact layup animation that missed like 98% of the time. Whatever happened in like 2K20 or 2K21, 2K patched it or changed it or whatever. I don't know what the hell they did, but you no longer get that animation. When you play hands-up defense in like 2K20, 2K21, it was like an automatic shooting foul whenever they would run at you and you was playing hands-up defense. And then now when you play hands-up defense, they just lay the ball and it doesn't even matter. So for the people that say, yo, just play hands-up defense, that shit don't work. Trust me. I've been making lockdowns since 2K17. That hands-up defense shit does not work. There are instances where it will work, yes. I'm not saying it don't work here or there. No, I'm not saying that. But in most cases, that shit is just going to get you laid or dunked on, okay? You have to jump, okay? Unless you're a 7-3 center with 99 interior defense, you need to be fucking jumping, okay? In the paint. Somebody's trying to bang that shit on you, jump, okay? Now, if he bang that shit on me and I jump, then, hey, you deserve to get that dunk. But I'm not about to just play hands-up defense and not jump and get dunked on like that. So, pogo stick, definitely a B-tier badge. Um, Post-lockdown, C-tier. And the reason why I'm putting this C-tier is because you don't need a high level of post-lockdown. Bronze post-lockdown will hold you down. It, it is a very good badge, and it is a very underrated badge. And a lot of people don't read the descriptions and stuff like that. But post-lockdown is the reason why when somebody is trying to do a drop step on you or something like that, or you're trying to drop step somebody, and you lose the ball, you try to do a post-spin, 
and you lose the ball and spin off and it goes out of bounds and shit, they don't realize that's because of post-lockdown. Post-lockdown increases the chance at stripping the opponent. So, you know, just having that on bronze is going to help you make them lose the ball. And that's not even considering if you're running glove and stuff like that. That can also help you with ripping them or, you know, taking the ball away from them. So, post-lockdown, C-tier for me. Um, rebound chaser. This is an S tier badge, you know. I feel like the badges that are like just bread and butter badges that you need for your build, you know, like anchor and rebound chaser are bread and butter badges for centers. If I didn't have any other badges defensively, these are the two badges I would need. If you told me I could only pick two badges as a center, I would have rebound chaser and I would have anchor. I wouldn't have anything else. And then if you told me as a small forward or shooting guard, if I could only have two badges defensively, these are the two badges that I would probably be taking, clamps and glove, because those are, like, very vital to playing, you know, perimeter defense. And that's why I have rebound chaser and S tier, because it's obviously an S tier badge is going to help you with rebounding the ball. You're going to have a hard ass time going up against somebody, you know, with Hall of Fame or go rebound chaser versus you not running rebound chaser at all. Definitely an S tier badge, in my opinion. Um, moving on, Box Out Beast. Box Out Beast, I have in D tier. And the reason why I have this in D tier is because I feel like if you have a high level of strength, you don't really need box out beast. You know, I run box out beast on bronze, but that's only because I don't want to get wormed. You know, I feel like if somebody's running gold box out beast and I have no box out beast at all, even with a 90 strength, I'm probably going to get wormed or thrown out the way. But if I run this with a 90 strength in bronze, I feel like it's it's decent, but you you don't if you have a 90 95 strength you probably don't even need a uh, box out beast unless they're running like i said gold or hall of fame box out beast which i don't think i hope nobody's running gold or hall of fame box out beast like just my opinion i hope not but you know that's the only time it's really ever useful to combat somebody else running box out beast otherwise box out beast by itself if i'm going up against somebody and i know they don't have box out beast i wouldn't even run this badge honestly i really wouldn't you know but you know, you got to run something to combat their version of the badge as well, too. Otherwise, you know, you're going to be getting thrown around. They're going to be worming you. They're going to be getting in front of you, even though you have them boxed out and stuff like that. Uh, moving on, Brick Wall, uh, another B-tier badge, in my opinion. You know, um, honestly, I, I, I'll actually move this to A-tier. And, and the reason why I say that is because I forgot that it's 3-in-1 uh, badge. You know, it's brick wall, moving truck, and uh, bruiser. And I really like the moving truck aspect of this badge. I, I hate when people try to box, uh, post me up and, and, you know, box me down in the post and stuff like that. Back me down. And uh, having this badge on gold is just a lifesaver, man. Even with, like, a 65 or a 70 strength. Right now, my strength is, like, a 70 on my center. And dudes still can't, you know, uh, baby me in the paint. People still can't back me down in the post because I have gold brick wall. You know what I'm saying? So that brick wall, it, it goes a long way. And the best part is I was able to get it even though my strength isn't, uh, you know, an 86. My strength caps out at 85. But on this build, I was able to get it because I have a 97 interior defense. So I was able to get it that way with interior defense. And... It's definitely very useful. This is definitely one of those second tier badges for big men that you definitely want to be running. Uh, moving on, uh, another A tier badge, Challenger. And Challenger, you know, it really, you could go, you could make an argument it's a B tier badge um, because bronze by itself is good enough where you don't really need it on higher levels. But the reason why I have it on A tier is because if you're a lockdown, you can make life hell for people when running this on like gold or hall of fame this badge is another one of those underrated badges i see so many people who say that challenger is useless you don't need challenger just take it off you could get good contest if you have long wingspan yes you can but if you're running challenger you're gonna get higher contest percentages you know what i'm saying so 
that regular contest might be 17%, but with Hall of Fame Challenger, that 17% might go up to like 39% or 40% or something like that, or a 50% contest. Meaning that if they don't green that bitch, that shot is not falling, you know? And it's going to be a lot harder for them to green it because what you contesting it is going to speed up or slow down their jump shot timing or whatever. So, you know, people really don't... I don't think people really understand, you know, the badges and how the badges work and what you need to do to activate the badges and how to use the badges. Think of 2K like a chess match and Challenger is going to help you you know, counter what they have on offense as far as shooting. Challenger is your direct counter to Deadeye and Blinders, but you have people saying, yo, I'm not going to run Challenger. I'm not going to run Challenger. And then when somebody's hitting 60% in a face, 40% contested in their face, they're like, how the hell is he hitting this shot in my face? Because he, you, you don't have Challenger and he has gold Deadeye, bro. Like, he, he has gold blinders and you're running no challenger. That's how he's hitting that shit in your face. So, yes, challenger is definitely an A-tier badge. And people, like, just horrendously underrate this badge. You should be running this. Even if you're just going to run it on bronze, run it on bronze or silver. But you should be running challenger if you play on the perimeter, period. Okay, moving on. We have another uh, S-tier badge. And that's going to be Interceptor. I mean, you guys all know how broken this badge was last year. It was just, just, just despicable how ridiculous, um, you know, Hall of Fame Interceptor was, you know. And even this year, you know, bronze, silver, gold, any level you rock this at, you know, is it's a decent return. You know, you're gonna be able to get those passing lanes, you're going to be able to get up and snatch those alley-oop passes out the sky and stuff like that. To me, Interceptor is still, you know, an S-tier badge. These are still the, you know, five strongest defensive badges. If you don't have any other badge in the game, you are fine with these five badges right here, regardless of position or, you know, play style or whatever. These are the strongest badges. So that's why I have Interceptor and S-tier. Um, moving on. Uh, we got Workhorse, and I have Workhorse and uh, A-Tier. And the reason why I have Workhorse and A-Tier is because I think people really underestimate, you know, how good uh, Workhorse is. You know what I'm saying? Workhorse is, it's going to help you on both sides of the ball because it speeds up your ability to pick up the ball. And if you've ever played 2K23 and you've poked the ball loose and then the person that you ripped, picks the ball up immediately, you're like, how the hell did I not get that still? It's because they're running workhorse, bro. When you run workhorse, you're going to pick up loose balls, and that just says loose ball. It doesn't say loose ball on defense, okay? That means loose ball. So whether you're the offensive player or the defensive player, you're going to pick up the ball. It's going to speed up your ability to pick up the ball. I've seen people say that bronze and silver interceptor are trash and that if you're not going to run it on gold or Hall of Fame, interceptor is useless. His ass is terrible. People say that, why? Because they're running Bronze Interceptor, but they're in the corner, and they're on the perimeter, and when they tip the pass, the passes are going out of bounds. The passes are going back to the player because they're tipping it, they're not snatching it, right? And that's because they're running a low-level Interceptor. That's why they're not actually grabbing the ball or whatever like that. But also, another reason why that they're not getting those snatches and those catches and those steals is because they're not running workhorse. When you run workhorse, it's going to speed up your ability to pick up the loose ball. So when you tip the pass, if you're running gold workhorse, Hall of Fame workhorse, silver workhorse, you're going to speed up your ability to catch that ball. And I noticed ever since I've put on like gold workhorse with uh, bronze interceptor, I've been able to snatch passes. Even when I tip it and it looks like it's going out of bounds, I've been able to grab the pass before it goes out of bounds and catch the steal or whatever. So that's a way if you don't have gold or Hall of Fame Interceptor, you can use that as a workaround and it's going to cost you less badge points because Hall of Fame Interceptor is like seven. Uh, you need a 99 steal for Hall of Fame Interceptor, if I'm not mistaken. And it's going to cost you like seven or eight defensive badge points to run that, uh, you know, on Hall of Fame where it's only going to cost you like five points to run like bronze or silver interceptor with like silver or gold workhorse. That's going to be five badge points defensively versus seven for just interceptor. With those five badge points, you're going to have 
two badges, you know? Um, so, yeah, that's why I have Workhorse at A tier. And then, of course, one of the most underrated badges, and this is hands down my most underrated badge in NBA 2K23, is Menace. And I have Menace in A tier. You know, um, I did a video on Menace. I'll probably link the video uh, in the comments so you guys can watch it if you haven't seen my video on Menace and why it's so underrated. But essentially, Menace is going to drop the attribute points of the guys that you are guarding. When you guard them closely, you bump them and stuff like that. And that's going to just lead to more steals because when you drop somebody's ball handle, when you crowd them, if you have on Hall of Fame Menace, you're dropping their uh, attribute points offensively by four whole points. So... Think of it like this. If you're guarding somebody that has an 80 ball handle and you have Hall of Fame minutes, you are effectively dropping their ball handle down to a 76 ball handle, which means, right, if you have silver or gold glove and you're crowding them like that, you're going to get so many steals and people aren't realizing this. Last year, the badge was useless because of how fast the game was. The, the quick speed pace of the game, it was impossible to bump somebody and stay glued to them, pressing your body against them for that long in 2K22 because everybody was so fast, quick. The dribbling was so fast and quick. It was so zippy and zany like fucking cartoons that, you know, you couldn't even get those body bumps like that for minutes to even work. But this year, the game is much slower pace. Think about how many times you play rec or park. And think about how many times you've been, like, guarding somebody and you've been bumping their body and bumping them and stuff like that, running into them and stuff like that while they're trying to rim run and stuff. That's going to be Menace. And Menace is going to be knocking down their attribute offensively every single time, which means you're going to be getting way more steals if you reach while running Gold or Hall of Fame Menace. So there you have it. This is my ranking for all of the defensive badges in NBA 2K23. It's been your boy, Make America Lit. Please be sure to subscribe for more NBA 2K23 content, badge breakdowns, and, of course, badge rankings just like this. I'm out, guys. Peace.